Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launches 5G test bed at Silver Jubilee celebration event of Tri in New Delhi. Says government infused new energy in telecom sector in last eight years to reach, reform, regulate, respond, and revolutionize. Indigenous 5G test bed in telecom sector, an important step towards making India's self reliance in advanced technology, asserts Prime Minister. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh launches Indigenous Navy destroyer warship INS Surat and frigate INS Udaygiri in Mumbai. Says government aims for make for world and not just make in India. India categorically rejects Pakistan National Assembly's resolution on delimitation exercise in Jammu and Kashmir. Home Minister Amit Shah holds high-level meeting to review security preparedness for Amarnath Yatra. President Ramnath Kovin meets with Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Holness, discusses enhancing bilateral cooperation. CBI raids premises of Congress Lok Sabha member Karti P. Chidambaram on charges of aiding group of foreign nationals in getting visas illegally. In Assam, seven persons killed while over two lakh people affected in 20 districts due to floods and landslides triggered by incessant rain. Prestigious Cannes Film Festival opens in France today, India to be the country of honor. Sweden decides to formally apply to join NATO. Three Indian pugilists ensure medals for the country as they enter semi-finals of Women's World Boxing Championships in Istanbul. Odisha to take on Karnataka in the title clash of 12th Hockey India Senior Women's National Championship in Bhopal today. And in IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians to take on Sunrisers Hyderabad in Mumbai this evening. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said the government has infused new energy in the telecom sector in the last eight years with the panchamrit of reach, reform, regulate, respond and revolutionize. Mr. Modi was addressing the Silver Jubilee celebration event of Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, TRI, through video conferencing in New Delhi today. Mr. Modi said India's telecom sector is a great example of self-reliance adding that the connectivity in 21st century India will determine the pace of progress of the nation. On the occasion, the Prime Minister also launched a 5G test bed and said, this indigenous 5G test bed in the telecom sector is an important step in India's self-reliance. I have to telecom sector क्रिटिकल और आधुनिक टेक्नोलॉजी की आत्मनिर्भरता की दिशा में एक अहम कदम है मैं इस प्रोजेक्ट से जुड़े सभी साथियों को हमारे आईआईटी को बहुत-बहुत बधाई देता हूं साथ ही मैं देश के युवा साथियों को रिसर्चर्स और कंपनीज को आमंत्रित करता हूं कि वो टेस्टिंग फैसिलिटी का उपयोग 5G टेक्नोलॉजी के निर्माण के लिए करें विशेष रूप से हमारे स्टार्टअप्स के लिए अपने प्रोडक्ट टेस्ट करने का ये बहुत बड़ा अवसर है यही नहीं 5G आई के रूप में जो देश का अपना 5G स्टैंडर्ड बनाया गया है वो देश के लिए बहुत गर्व की बात है The prime minister added the 5G technology is a huge opportunity for startups to grow and test their products कि आने वाले डेढ़ दशक में 5G से भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था में 450 बिलियन डॉलर का योगदान होने वाला है ये सिर्फ इंटरनेट की गति नहीं बल्कि प्रगति और एम्प्लॉयमेंट जनरेशन की गति को भी बढ़ाने वाला है इसलिए 5G तेजी से रोल आउट हो इसके लिए सरकार और इंडस्ट्री दोनों को कलेक्टिव एफर्ट्स की जरूरत है इस दशक के अंत तक हम 6G 6G सर्विस भी लॉन्च कर पाए इसके लिए भी हमारी टास्क फोर्स काम करना शुरू कर चुकी हमारा प्रयास है 
कि टेलीकॉम सेक्टर और फाइव जी टेक्नोलॉजी में हमारे स्टार्टअप तेजी से तैयार हो ग्लोबल चैंपियन बने द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑल्सो सेड फाइव जी विल हेल्प इन इम्प्रूविंग गवर्नेंस ईज ऑफ लिविंग एंड ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस इन द कंट्री हर स्तर पर कनेक्टिविटी को आधुनिक बनाना ही होगा और इसकी बुनियाद का काम करेंगे आधुनिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर का निर्माण आधुनिक टेक्नोलॉजी का ज्यादा से ज्यादा इस्तेमाल 5G टेक्नोलॉजी भी देश की गवर्नेंस में ईज ऑफ लिविंग ईज ऑफ डूइंग बिजनेस इन अनेक विषयों में सकारात्मक बदलाव लाने वाली है इससे खेती स्वास्थ्य शिक्षा इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर और लॉजिस्टिक्स हर सेक्टर में ग्रोथ को बल मिलेगा इससे सुविधा भी बढ़ेगी और रोजगार के भी नए अवसर बनेंगे Describing the 2G era as the symbol of policy paralysis and corruption, Mr. Modi said the nation has moved transparently to 4G and now 5G. The Prime Minister said the government has encouraged healthy competition, which has led to India having cheapest telecom data charges. He also said the tele density and internet users are fast expanding in the country. The mobile manufacturing units in India have also expanded from 2. to over 200 and today the country is the world's biggest mobile manufacturing hub hamari sarkar technology ko nirantar upgrade karne ke sath sath desh ke delivery system ko bhi lagatar sudhar rahi isne desh mein service aur manufacturing dono se jude startup ecosystem ko bal diya hai regulation sirf ek sector ke simao tak simit nahi hai टेक्नोलॉजी अलग अलग सेक्टर्स को इंटरकनेक्ट कर रही है हमारी आजादी के अमृतकाल की ग्रोथ को गति देने वाली हो ऊर्जा देने वाली हो नया विश्वास पैदा करने वाली हो एक नई छलांग मारने के सपने देखने वाली हो और साकार करने के संकल्प वाली हो Speaking on the occasion, Communications, Electronics and Information Technology Minister Ashwini Vaishnav said the country has developed a complete 4G stack while the 5G technology stack is in the advanced stage. Today, our scientists and engineers have developed a complete 4G technology stack which is ready for deployment by BSNL and the 5G technology stack is also in very good advanced stage of development. By the end of this year, we should see our own indigenously developed 5G technology stack. Speaking at the event, Minister of State for Information and Broadcasting, Dr. L. Murugan said, TRI has continuously worked to protect the interest of service providers and consumers of telecom and broadcasting sector. In his address, Information and Broadcasting Secretary Apoorva Chandra said, the reach, scope and employment is huge in the broadcasting sector. During the event, the Prime Minister also released a postal stamp to commemorate the Silver Jubilee celebrations of TRI. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today launched indigenously built Navy destroyer warship INS Surat and frigate INS Udayagiri in Mumbai. Speaking on the occasion, Mr Singh said, in the years to come, India will not only limit itself for building ships for Indian use, but cater to the demand of the entire world. He said the government aims for make for the world and not just make in India. आज जब एम डी एस एल द्वारा निर्मित आई एन एस उदयगिरी और आई एन एस सूरत की सफलतापूर्वक लॉन्चिंग हो रही है इसमें कोई संदेह नहीं रह जाता है कि आने वाले समय में हम न केवल अपनी जरूरतों के लिए बल्कि दुनिया भर की जरूरतों के लिए भी शिप बिल्डिंग करेंगे यानी हम न केवल मेक इन इंडिया बल्कि मेक फॉर द वर्ल्ड के सपने को पूरा करेंगे ऐसा मेरा पक्का विश्वास है The defense minister said considering the fact most of the international trade including two thirds of oil trade one third bulk cargo and more than half of container traffic in the Indo-Pacific region are done sea route it is imperative to maintain a safe and secure environment in the region and India being an important stakeholder has the responsibility to contribute for the same which can only be possible by creating a strong naval base he said considering the uncertain situation developing in Indo-Pacific and Indian Ocean regions The role of the Indian Navy is going to be more crucial. He said as India is growing into a strong prosperous nation and is going into way to be a global power, the role of the Indian Navy becomes extremely important. 
India today categorically rejected the resolution passed by the National Assembly of Pakistan on the subject of the delimitation exercise in Jammu and Kashmir. In response to media queries regarding the resolution, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bhakti said, Pakistan has no local standard to pronounce or interfere in matters that are internal to India, including the Indian territories under Pakistan's illegal and forcible occupation. He said the entire territory of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh has been, is and shall always remain an integral part of India. The spokesperson said the delimitation exercise in Jammu and Kashmir is a democratic exercise based on the principles of extensive stakeholder consultation and participation. He called it regrettable that instead of putting their own house in order, the leadership in Pakistan continues to interfere in India's internal affairs and engage in baseless and provocative anti-India propaganda. India reiterated that Pakistan must immediately seize anti-India cross-border terrorism and shut down its infrastructure of terrorism. It asked Pakistan to stop the grave and persistent human rights violations in Pakistan-occupied Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh, refrain from effecting any further material changes in the status of Pakistan-occupied Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh and vacate the Indian territories that are under its illegal and forcible occupation. Home Minister Amit Shah today held a high-level meeting to review the security preparedness of the Amarnath Yatra. The annual pilgrimage will begin on the 30th of June after a gap of two years. The Yatra will conclude on 11th of August. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha, National Security Advisor Ajit Duwal, JNK Police Chief Dilbag Singh, along with other senior officials participated in the meeting. Top officials of the Intelligence Bureau, Border Security Force, Central Reserve Police Force, Indo-Tibetan Border Police and the Sashastra Simabal also attended the meet. The meeting was held days after Home Secretary Ajay Kumar Bhalla convened a similar meeting to review the security preparedness of the annual pilgrimage. President Ramnath Kovind has highlighted the significant role played by the Indian diaspora in Jamaica in strengthening the cultural bond between the two nations. President Kovind was addressing the Indian community in Jamaica yesterday on the second day of his visit to the Caribbean nation. The Indian diaspora is a living bridge between our two countries. It is a matter of pride for us that members of the Indian diaspora are recognized at the highest level for their contribution to Jamaica. We are very proud of the achievements of the Indian community in Jamaica. Some of you have risen to the highest government offices in Jamaica. I have been informed that many of you have been conferred with distinctions and honored by the government here. We welcome this acknowledgement by the government of Jamaica of the contributions of the Indian community. Earlier, President Kovind held a meeting with Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Holness, to enhance cooperation between India and Jamaica in trade and investment, services, sports, as well as cooperation in regional and multilateral fora. Following the meeting, the President and Prime Minister Holness witnessed the signing and exchange of an MOU between Sushma Swaraj Institute of Foreign Service and Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade of Jamaica on cooperation in the field of diplomatic trading. President Kovind also inaugurated Ambedkar Avenue at downtown Kingston. Speaking on the occasion, President Kovind said, Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar introduced progressive ideals for the social and economic empowerment. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launches 5G test pad at the Silver Jubilee celebration event of Tri in New Delhi says government infused new energy in telecom sector in the last eight years through reach, reform, regulate, respond and revolutionize. Indigenous 5G testbed in telecom sector, an important step towards making India self-reliance in advanced technology, asserts Prime Minister. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh launches indigenous Navy destroyer warship INS Surat and frigate INS Udaigiri in Mumbai, says government aims for make for the world and not, not just make in India. India categorically rejects Pakistan National Assembly's resolution on delimitation exercise in Jammu and Kashmir. Home Minister Amit Shah holds high-level meeting to review security preparedness for Amarnath Yatra. President Ramnath Kovan meets with Prime Minister of Jamaica Andrew Holness, discusses enhancing bilateral cooperation. CBI raids premises of Congress Lok Sabha member Karthi P. Chidambaram 
on charges of aiding group of foreign nationals and getting visas illegally. In Assam, seven persons killed while over two lakh people affected in 20 districts due to floods and landslides triggered by incessant rain. Prestigious Cannes Film Festival opens in France today, India to be the country of honor. Sweden decides to formally apply to join NATO. Three Indian pugilists ensure medals for the country as they enter semi-finals of the Women's World Boxing Championships in Istanbul. Odisha to take on Karnataka in the title clash of the 12th Hockey India Senior Women's National Championship in Bhopal today. And in IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians to take on Sunrisers Hyderabad in Mumbai this evening. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate EIR News Alerts. Competition ke agar aap kar rahe tayari, to unke liye all in the radio par hum lai hai abhyas. Ek aisa karakram jis mein aap puchhenge sawal WhatsApp number 92890-9404 par. Ya phir email karenge abhyas.airnews at gmail.com par. और हमारे विशेषज्ञ देंगे इसका जवाब इस बार का विषय है एंथ्रोपोलॉजी और सवाल भेजने की अंतिम तारीख है 18 मई आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास वेलकम बैक टू द मिड डे न्यूज़ ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो इन असम नॉर्मल लाइफ हैज बीन अफेक्टेड एज न्यू एरियाज वर इनंडेटेड विद वाटर ड्यू टू इनसेसेंट रेन्स ट्रिगरिंग फ्लड्स एंड लैंडस्लाइड्स Seven persons were killed, while over two lakh people across 20 districts affected due to floods and landslides. More from our correspondent. Over two lakh people are reeling under the fury of floods in 20 districts in Assam. Seven persons lost their lives due to floods and landslides, while six persons are missing in Kachar district. Flood water and landslides damaged over 6,000 houses. 33,000 flooded people are staying at relief camps. Rice, salt, dal, drinking water, mustard oil and baby food are being distributed among flood affected people by the district administrations. Water logging has also been reported in some areas in Guwahati city. Meanwhile, North East Frontier Railway is putting all out efforts to restore the rail connectivity in South Assam and neighboring states. Floods and landslides caused massive damages to rail infrastructure at Dima Hasau district in Assam. Manas Kadim Sharma, AR News, Guwahati. Southwest monsoon has covered most parts of Andaman and Nicobar Islands six days ahead of its schedule. The India Meteorological Department or IMD said Andaman and Nicobar Islands and adjoining areas have been experiencing rainfall due to the strengthening southwesterly winds. The IMD said conditions are favorable for further advance of monsoon into some more parts of South Bay of Bengal entire Andaman Sea and Andaman Islands and some parts of East Central Bay of Bengal during next two to three days. The Med Department has issued an orange alert in four North Kerala districts of Mallapuram, Kurikur, Kannur and Kassargur, indicating the possibility of heavy to very heavy rainfall. Those engaged in fishing activities have been asked not to venture into the sea. CBI sleuths are making searches in the premises of Congress Lok Sabha member Karthi P. Chinambaram, son of former Union Finance Minister and senior Congress leader P. Chinambaram at Chennai in Tamil Nadu. The search has also been carried out in other multiple locations in Mumbai and Delhi. Reacting to the CBI raids, Mr. Karthi said he has lost count of the number of searches. In a tweet this morning, former Finance Minister P. Chinambaram said, a CBI team searched his residence at Chennai and his official residence at Delhi by showing a FIR in which he is not named. He has said the search team did not find or seize anything. More from a Chennai correspondent. Today's raids are relating to a new case filed by the Apex Investigating Agency against the Congress Lok Sabha member Mr. Karthi P. Chidambaram, reportedly on charges of aiding a large group of foreign nationals in getting visas illegally. The case is considered an offshoot of the ongoing investigations against him in a series of other cases. The ex-finance minister Mr. P. Chidambaram and Mr. Karthi Chidambaram have been named in quite a few cases, including the one involving the Foreign Investment Promotion Board approval for the INX media and money laundering case that are being pursued by the CBI and the Enforcement Directorate. Jay Singh, AAR News, Chennai. Over 191 crore 48 lakh vaccine doses have been administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive. The health ministry said over 10,78,000 doses were administered yesterday. 
The recovery rate is currently at 98.75%. 1,569 new cases were recorded in the last 24 hours. Sweden has decided to formally apply to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO following in the footsteps of neighboring Finland. Both Finland and Sweden have ended their long-held positions of neutrality in the wake of the Russia's military operation in Ukraine. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has said the Nordic countries would be welcomed into the alliance. However, the process could take months once their formal applications have been sent in. The 75th Cannes Film Festival opens in France today. The film festival is one of the highly anticipated and most prestigious events that several artists, celebrities and fans look forward to in the entertainment industry. The film festival is, will continue till the 28th of this month. Red carpet event at the 75th Cannes Film Festival is going to be a gala event as Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Thakur, along with movie celebrities including A.R. Rehman, Nawazuddin Siddiqui and actor Pooja Hegre are set to walk as part of Indian delegation. India is the official country of honor at Cannes Film Market in this edition of the festival. We have more in this desk report. This edition of the Khan Festival will also see the world premiere of R. Madhavan directorial debut, Rocketry, The Nambi Effect. The drama film is based on the life of Nambi Narayanan, a former scientist and aerospace engineer of the ISRO, who was falsely accused of espionage. R. Madhavan has donned the lead role in the film apart from producing it. Music maestro and Oscar winner A. R. Rahman's directorial debut, Lee Musk, will also have its world premiere at the Khan Film Market's Khan XR program. The 36-minute film will provide a cinematic sensory experience incorporating virtual reality with motion, music and scent integrated into the narrative. Other Indian films to be screened at Khan include Marathi film Godavari, Hindi film Alpha Beta Gamma, Mishing language film Boomba Ride, Hindi and Marathi film Duin and Malayalam film Tree Full of Parrots. Ravi Kumar, AR News, Delhi. And now let's listen to a special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. The Treaty of Salbai, which ended the First Anglo-Maratha War, was signed on the 17th of May 1782 between the British East India Company and the Marathas. Salbai is situated in Gwalior district, Madhya Pradesh. Maratha ruler Mahadaji Sindhya made an agreement with the English in October 1781 by which he agreed to negotiate with the Pune Council for a treaty with the English. The negotiations started in early 1782. According to the terms of the treaty, the English retained Salseth, an island in Maharashtra. Mahadaji Sindhya got back all his territory west of the river Yamuna and that both parties returned each other's territory conquered during the course of war in South India. The Treaty of Salbai formed a turning point in the history of English rule in India. While the English only gained the island of Salset, it emboldened the British as they had gained the upper edge against the strongest power in India at that point of time. We also remember revolutionary freedom fighter Mahabir Singh, who was martyred on the 17th of May 1939. He was a close confidant of legendary revolutionary freedom fighters Chandrasekhar Kharaza and Bhagat Singh. Mahabir Singh was born in 1904 in District Eta, Uttar Pradesh. 
He joined the freedom movement during school days and participated in the non-cooperation movement. In 1925, while studying in college at Kanpur, Mahabir met other young revolutionaries of his time and became a member of the Hindustan Republican Association. He moved to Lahore in 1927 and took part in revolutionary activities. Mahabir was arrested in connection with Saunders' murder case and tried in the second Lahore conspiracy case along with Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev and Rajguru. Mahabir was sentenced to transportation for life. In Andamans, he protested against the poor living conditions and inhuman treatment of prisoners in the cellular jail. Mahabir undertook fast to secure their rights and died on the 17th of May 1939 during torturous forced feeding. We salute the great revolutionary. We also remember freedom fighter Dolat Rao Nayak, who was killed by the British police on the 17th of May 1879. He was an active member of the Ramoshi group founded by legendary Marathi freedom fighter Vasudev Balwant Farke. <laughs> Donat Rao Naik hailed from Satara, Maharashtra. He joined Vasudev Balwant Farki's Ramushi Revolutionary Group in 1879. He participated in several operations on British businessmen in Pune to obtain funds for managing the revolutionary activities. Donat Rao Naik was killed in a skirmish with the British police at Talegao on the 17th of May 1879. We salute the great martyr. <laughs> We also remember martyr Sheer Muhammad Khan, who participated in the first war of Indian independence in 1857. He also organized a group of independence activists to attack the British establishments for seizing their properties and arms. He was caught by company troops in an encounter in charge with plundering the government properties and rebellion against the British. He was sentenced to imprisonment for life with hard labor and irons. Sheer Muhammad Khan died at the cellular jail in the Andaman Islands on the 17th of May, 1858. We salute the great son of the soil. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. On to some sports news. In the 12th IBA Women's World Boxing Championships, Indian boxers Nikhat Zareen, Manisha and Parveen continued their brilliant run to confirm three medals for the country by entering the semi-finals in Istanbul yesterday. Semi-final matches will take place on Wednesday while the finals will be played on Thursday and Friday. Odisha will take on Karnataka in the final of the 12th Hockey India Senior Women's National Championship in Bhopal today. The match will begin at 4 p.m. In IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians will take on Sunrisers Hyderabad at the Vankare Stadium in Mumbai this evening. The match will begin at 7.30 p.m. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launches 5G test bed at Silver Jubilee celebration event of TRI in New Delhi, says government infused new energy in telecom sector in last eight years through reach, reform, regulate, respond and revolutionize. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh launches indigenous Navy destroyer warship INS Suras and frigate INS Udaygiri in Mumbai, says government aims for make for world and not just make in India. India categorically rejects Pakistan National Assembly's resolution on delimitation exercise in Jammu and Kashmir. Home Minister Amit Shah holds high-level meeting to review security preparedness for Ambarnath Yatra. In Assam, seven persons killed while over two lakh people affected in 20 districts due to floods and landslides triggered by incessant rain. Prestigious Cannes Film Festival opens in France today, India to be the country of honor, and in IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians to take on Sunrisers Hyderabad in Mumbai this evening. And with that, we end the midday news. <laughs>